What is the proper relationship between government and morality? And does the contemporary decline in morality threaten our freedoms? This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Jan Jekielek. Billy Graham is considered one of the most influential Christian leaders of the 20th century. Today, we sit down with Will Graham, his grandson, who has his own ministry. We discuss freedom, morality, and forgiveness as a central theme to his film, Unbroken Path to Redemption. You actually play Billy Graham in this recent film, Unbroken, uh, The Path to Redemption. And uh, I noticed, and I think as we all did, that, that forgiveness is a, is a major theme in this film. And I'm wondering if you could kind of explore yeah, that a little it, bit for me. Well, first and foremost, it's a life story of Louis Zamperini. It's really the second half of his life. Um, there was a movie that was made a couple years ago by Angelina Jolie that kind of takes him from his uh, young ad adolescent years all the way through his war years, his captivity by the Japanese, and it ends with him coming home hugging his mom. This movie picks up right after he hugs his mom and picks it up from there. And most people think, oh, he made it home, he's safe, he's good, he's back home, everything's good. And it really wasn't. He was dealing with PTSD and he started to drink a lot and uh, he was having nightmares for the first time and he couldn't quit and he, was, he would use drinking trying to pass out so he didn't have to dream and because uh, all these nightmares of the people that tortured him while he was in uh, prison and during the war and, uh, and so he hated the Japanese, he hated the, his captors because they tortured him all the time way beyond any human could really handle. Uh, they almost killed him um, but he, he made it through the war but he hated his captors and he would just have these nightmares and he would start to drink. His drinking would make him drunk and pass out and not come home. It started to destroy his marriage. He found, he tried to get married, thought that would make him feel better, find love and be better, and married a wonderful lady. Um, but yet, that didn't satisfy him. He was still a drunk. He was still having nightmares. He wasn't satisfied in life. Well, they decided to have a kid. A kid will bring happiness. And they brought great joy, but didn't, solve what he was looking for and he was still a drunk he was still having nightmares and um, his his whole life was falling apart he was losing all the money that he had he was losing his wife she had filed for divorce going to take the child and move away and it was a bad situation and then in 1949 all this was in 1949 in los angeles and um, there was a revival going on in town and uh, some friends of theirs invited them to go. Well, he wouldn't go because he hated Christians. He hated God. He figured like God had done everything wrong against him, had hurt him, made him miserable, made him get captured, took away his running ability, uh, made him an alcoholic. You know, if God really loved me, then why did all these bad things happen? And that was Louis. And, um, but, but he didn't want anything to do with God, so he didn't go. But his wife, Cynthia, went. And she gave her life to Christ and uh, God forgave her of her sin, and she came back and she forgave Louis. Said, Louis, I forgive you, God loves you, and I love you, and I'm not supposed to divorce you, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna stick with you. And that, because she was willing to forgive Louis for being a bad husband, bad drunk, that softened her, her, his heart just enough for that when it came back next Sunday that he would go. And he went and he hated everything that the preacher said, he hated the preacher and didn't like anything that the preacher said. Well, next week she kept begging him and begging him, and so he went back. You know, just because his wife was not gonna divorce him, he said, well, I owe her something, I'll go. But when the preaching, uh, when the invitation starts, I'm leaving. And so when the invitation came, he got up to leave, but he couldn't leave. He found himself walking to the front and gave his life to Christ, and that preacher was Billy Graham, my grandfather. And so this movie covers this transformation, the conversion of Louis Zamperini. And in that, I play the role of my grandfather. And um, it's a great story of forgiveness because Louis, uh, his wife Cynthia, received forgiveness. She gave forgiveness to her husband for being a bad husband, bad drunk. Um, Louis found God's forgiveness. And in return, Louis was able to forgive his captors, all these people that tortured Incredible. him. He had no longer hate for him, but now he had love and concern for him. And he went back to tell them about Jesus, how Jesus changed his life, and God can change their life. That's, that's it's incredible. Um, so, in this in this vein, um, 
here's a statement, okay? American society as a whole, um, in American society as a whole, um, faith and tradition and uh, maybe traditional morality are things that are on the decline. Mm -hmm. Is that something you would agree or disagree with? Yeah, well, I definitely see it. I see um, those uh, morality definitely declining. We see the churches um, here in the states, at least people identifying with the church is declining. Um, it, it's, that's not true of every church. There's a lot of churches that are growing. The church I go to is growing uh, very well, but a lot of churches are declining. Morality is definitely declining. And um, I think we've taken the eye off the most important thing in life, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do that, that's the result that we see. When we, when we don't make God a priority in our life, then we've left up to our own vices, our own way of thinking, our own way of life. Um, we come up with our own morality and uh, because we have no standard to judge anything by. And so we'll do anything that brings us pleasure is our morality. And uh, we see that taking place in the United States, and not just in the United States, but all around the world right now. So, and when you look at how people treat, let's say, faith and religion today, how would you, com how would that compare to, say, faith and religion at the time America was founded or a few hundred years back? Uh, well, if you, you know, look, if you look at the American, uh, from a historical standpoint, look at our founding fathers, what they wrote, our our documents, like our Constitution, Declaration of Independence, it all mentions God. There's no, and, th and back then, they weren't talking about uh, Muhammad as their God. It was a Christian God. And uh, they were talking about Christ and God in general, but, you know, they were open. They, a lot of them people out of Europe came to, the, to this land to get away from religious persecution. And so they came out of religious persecution. So they wanted anyone to have the freedom of worship because they believed that God allowed us to worship. Um, but that was based on Christian principles. And so the founding of this nation was definitely founded on Christian principles. Uh, there's no hiding that. You can read state constitutions to our national constitution. It all mentions God. And, um, and I'm grateful for that. It's given us a lot of freedoms. I think it's made us into a wonderful nation. Uh, we're not a perfect nation. Because um, you and I are here. I mean, we're not, we're, you're never going to find a perfect place here on this earth. Not right now, not until Jesus comes back. But I believe he's going to come back one day and establish his government. And that's what the Bible talks about, um, the second coming of Christ. The Bible teaches that. Um, and I believe that he will come again and set up his kingdom here on earth. How do you see faith as, uh, and how that relates to having an open and free society? Well, that, that's a good question. You know, I believe with faith, um, when we trust in a higher being, in this case, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus Christ, um, that God's given us, uh, it, when we follow him, we have a lot of freedom. Now, God's given us freedom, period, but we can make the choice to live according to his purposes or we can live according to our own purposes. And I think when we live according to his purposes, you'll find out, that there's a lot more harmonious action, interaction with other human beings um, because we're striving to please God, which means we also have to strive to you know, get along with each other. That's what the Ten Commandments are about. The Ten Commandments deal with the vertical, uh, our vertical relationship with God, but also our horizontal relationship with other men and women, that is. And so when we strive for those purposes, then we get along with God, then we're also going to get along with our fellow man. That doesn't mean that we're not going to have problems uh, among each other. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to hurt each other. And um, that's why I, th I believe that God's put uh, rulers in place, kings or presidents, governors, whatever they might be, in our place to help control that. I believe that the role of the government is to uh, punish that which is evil and to yet promote that which is good. And uh, th for those good things, uh, the government should be behind. And for those things that are bad and evil, uh, that bring dissension among people. Uh, government should, you know, or hurt people, you know, murder. Government should punish that. And so um, I believe that there is a, and the free society can, I believe, can only exist in a, in a Christian society. And because um, otherwise, then you're, there's too many self rules because any government that comes in or any ruler that comes in, they're going to impose their own, what they believe, because it's their rules. And, but yet, when you have a free society, then you run by a, a constitution or things like that that dictate what the rules are. 
In this case, here in the United States, we've been blessed to have a wonderful Christian heritage in our founding of our country. And I, I believe it's laid down a wonderful basis of freedoms that we can enjoy today. And a lot of those freedoms are starting to erode today because our morality has declined so much that the government has to intervene a lot more now. Okay, so second last question, because you just piqued my interest. Uh, where, where do you see that erosion? Maybe can you expand on that? Yeah, it, the erosion's in man's heart. And that's where, it's, that's where it's taking place. It's in our society as a whole. It, it's de the government is only a symptom <laughs> of our society. So when we see government dysfunction, like we're seeing a lot of dysfunction in Washington as a whole, um, I think most Americans would probably agree with that statement, whether you're Republican or Democrat or Independent, we see a lot of dysfunction in, in Washington. That's just a symptom of society. It, it, the government's only a symptom of a greater problem. And so the problem is, our hearts, my heart, your heart, everybody's heart. And we're not always chasing after the good things in life. We're not chasing after God. We're not making him the supreme leader in our life. We're not making him the, the master of our life. And we've made ourselves the master. And when we do that, uh, we have bad problems and we see that erosion starting to take place. Okay, so, so where, where can we go today? You know, we are where we are today. What would be your vision for a future where uh, people can live truly better lives? Well, there's not going to be a perfect government, all right? Um, and uh, what, But I, what I do see is that when we as individuals um, put our faith and trust in God, and there's a lot of people that don't put their faith in God, but I believe that when we do put our faith in God, it we want to, first and foremost, we put God first in our life. We want to serve God. The second thing, God says, to love the Lord with all your heart. The second is to love your fellow man. And so now we want to help people in need. Um, we want to help those around us. We want to be good to our neighbors. We want to be good to our fellow man because God, that's what God desires us to do. We'll start to see a better society when that takes place. But when we put, take God out of it, now we make ourselves king of our own life. The, the only thing we do is self-preservation. We're not worried about other people. We don't want to get along with other people. It's, you know, you're going to, you better take or you're going to be taken advantage of. You better do it. And so that's where I see a lot of the erosion taking place. And I believe that's where when we give our life to Christ, we can see that change. And it can only be a spiritual change. It'll never be dictated by a lawmaker. It'll never be dictated by a politician or someone in the White House. It's going to be dictated because God changed someone's heart. And I believe that's the only hope for America or for anyone in this world. Thank you. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Great mm -hmm. to see you. Thank You're you. Great to see you as well. Thank you.